British Airways has a new toy and the Airbus A350 has gathered a lot of media attention, particularly on the new Club Suite Business Class product. But what's the aircraft like to fly on for the rest of the passengers in economy? Well, today I'm going to find out for myself as I take the quick flight from Terminal 5 here at London Heathrow down to Madrid. Welcome to Blake Edgington Airborne. Let's get going. Heathrow's Terminal 5 is the main hub for British Airways and there's no mistaking which airline you're flying with in the check-in area. My flight to Madrid is the first departure today and as the terminal's unusually quiet, I grabbed my boarding pass from the self-service machines and quickly made my way airside. Terminal 5 is well known for shopping and offers a number of ways for passengers to part with their money except at this time of day. I was genuinely surprised to find the majority of stores closed when I passed security a little over an hour before departure. Apart from the airport duty free store, choices were very limited, although for those in need of caffeine or something to eat, there were a couple of options available. With little to do in Terminal 5A, I made my way to the aircraft which was parked at the Terminal 5C satellite. With some direction from this helpful lady, I hopped on board the transit for the short journey. Terminal 5C was very quiet at this early hour, but with the sun coming up and huge windows, it did offer some great views of the aircraft. So that's a quick look around Terminal 5 here at Heathrow Airport. As I've already said in the video, do bear in mind most of the shops and restaurants don't open till about 5.30 in the morning, so if you're on a very early flight like me, you may not have a chance to see or do much. But I'm more excited for the flight, so let's head on board the A350 and go to Madrid. Like KLM who I reviewed recently, British Airways are celebrating their 100th anniversary this year and the A350 is the latest addition to a varied long haul fleet which also includes the A380 and Boeing 747. The airline has ordered 18 of these aircraft and the initial long haul destinations are Dubai and Toronto. With new technology the A350 is of course more environmentally friendly than BA's older jets and offers a more comfortable cabin for the passenger which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. But first the price and British Airways offer a number of flights between London and Madrid daily. On this example search a one-way fare starts from £54 and this is based on the cheapest economy basic price including hand luggage only and group 5 boarding or in other words last. But enough about money, let's see what the A350 experience is like on board and British Airways offer a total of 331 seats with 219 in economy. 56 in premium or world traveler plus and 56 club suites in business class 
The cabin feels spacious and features high ceilings as well as LED mood lighting, and while lights are found in the panel above your head, sadly BA chose not to install individual air vents, which is disappointing. There is however plenty of space for luggage in the large overhead lockers, and if you've had enough of the view outside, window blinds are fitted unlike on the Boeing 787. The toilets at the rear of the cabin were relatively spacious and featured baby changing facilities, although it was a shame to see a little damage in here on such a new aircraft. Of course, as you'd expect, seatback TVs are fitted for those long haul trips, which we'll look at a little later on. First though, it's time for the in-flight service, and to begin, the crew handed out chocolates in celebration of this flight taking place on the 25th of August, in other words, BA's birthday. When this aircraft flies long haul, you can expect complimentary food and drink, but on this flight, a buy on board selection is offered in economy, provided in partnership with M&S. The selection is quite good and prices are in line with many carriers in Europe. As much as I wanted some Percy Pig sweets, I behaved myself and purchased an apple juice before sitting back and taking another look at that beautiful A350 wing. Well, I have to admit, I'm enjoying my experience on board the A350 so far, but what could you expect from the economy class seat? Let's take a look. Online seat selection is of course available in booking with British Airways and is free from 24 hours before departure. If you want to choose your seat before this, then a fee will be charged. No matter which seat you choose in economy, the overall layout will be the same and at the top you'll find the entertainment screen, which while not the biggest in the sky, does the job well and can be slightly adjusted to offer a better viewing angle. On the bottom of the screen is USB power, as you'd expect from a modern aircraft, and of course headphone jacks to enjoy the entertainment. Beneath the screen you have a literature pocket which contains your A350 safety card as well as the M&S buy on board menu and high life shopping selection. Sadly there wasn't an in-flight magazine provided on this flight. The tray table, like many long haul aircraft today, offers a little flexibility. When used in half there's just enough space for a drink or you can open the table up fully providing room for a meal if needed and it offers a good amount of workspace too. The table can also be brought closer to you if required. With the table stowed, we can take a look at the seat pocket. This is where you can keep your personal items in flight, and there's room in here for your in-flight essentials, which in my case is my notebook. On the long haul routes that this aircraft will operate, legroom is very important, and I was pleased with the space available for someone six foot tall. The seat overall was very comfortable. Adding to the comfort are the adjustable headrests provided in economy, and I personally like the look of the seat. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I've mentioned it a couple of times now, so let's take a closer look at the British Airways in-flight entertainment system. The screen is responsive with good picture quality and I was pleasantly surprised at the range of options available. There's a great choice of films which can be found by category, but one thing that I couldn't find was a search option which would have been helpful. If you don't have time for a feature film then you can choose some shorter programmes which include classic shows like Blackadder and a selection of aviation related content for my fellow enthusiasts. BA have a really useful city guide feature found in the audio section and you can even choose a gift for that special someone, although why people would pay so much for a handbag is beyond me. Children can access a range of age appropriate entertainment in their own easy to use section, a nice touch. Of course for me the highlight of the system was the in-flight map, which offers a range of preset camera positions and you can control the screen yourself very easily. The A350 is also fitted with Wi-Fi and connecting is fairly simple, although on this flight it wasn't free and I personally decided to save the £4.99 which would have bought me 25 megabytes of data. Although I didn't use the Wi-Fi in the air, I did update my social media accounts with images from the trip on the ground, and if you'd like to follow my future journeys, details of my Instagram, Twitter and Facebook accounts are on screen now. The seatbelt sign is on, we are now approaching Madrid. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for my final thoughts on the A350 experience, but for now, enjoy the view.
welcome to Madrid. That's it, that's my first experience on the British Airways A350. This is the part of the video that I'll share with you my final thoughts on the trip. Starting off at Terminal 5 London Heathrow, I always get excited traveling through this particular terminal. It is one of my personal favorites. I like the design of it, and there is plenty to see and do if it's open. Sadly, because of my early departure today, the shops hadn't really started to open up yet, which is a bit disappointing and also surprising considering they don't open till 5.30. That's pretty late in my opinion when there's so many flights departing early in the day. And then we come to the flight itself. Now I have been on the A350 before with Iberia and I did enjoy this experience even more with British Airways. I found the aircraft to be incredibly comfortable overall. I like the design of it, the large windows, the LED lighting and the seat itself. It was for me quite attractive and also the legroom was really impressive, much better than I expected. What I will say about the seat though is I found it to be quite firm. Now that may just be me but on a long haul journey that is something to consider. The in-flight entertainment system on the A350 in economy was very easy to use and the interface was nice and smooth as well with a really good selection. And of course, as I personally always find when I fly BA, the crew were fantastic today and it was a nice touch to have a free chocolate celebrating British Airways 100th year. So will I choose flying the A350 again in future? Well, I definitely will. I'm a big fan of the 787 Dreamliner, including the ones that British Airways has, and it'd be interesting, hopefully in future, to try them back to back to see which one's better, in my opinion, overall. But we'll see when that happens. In the meantime, please do make sure to leave a thumbs up if you like the video, and also leave me some feedback in the comments section below. Good or bad, I do read them all. And of course, as always, if you have enjoyed the video and like to see more, do subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below and the notification bell so you never miss a future video. And most of all, Take care.